Agalonemas are evergreen flowering perennials. I paid 600 for this one. They tolerate low light conditions better than most plants. Beautiful color on the leaf is what takes my breath away. Remove these pests physically from your plants. Hi green geeks. Today at the plant table, I will be talking of the very underrated but yet lovely Aglonema. As you can see, I have set out my entire Aglonema collection and I'm sitting right in the middle of it. I just love doing that and I'm feeling very happy right now talking about one of my favorite plants. Before we get into this video, I'd like to remind you to follow me on Instagram as we put a lot of posts there and there are many updates and there's a lot of chats going on. So I'd like you to be a part of that community as well. So don't forget Instagram. Agalonemas are evergreen flowering perennials that grow in tropical rainforests and they are mainly kept for the striking beautiful colored foliage rather than for their flowers. The flowers grow in spadixes and spats like most aroids and uh, you can pinch off those flowers, remove them if you want because the plant can then focus on bringing out more leaves instead. If you want to keep the flowers, there's no harm in that. You can let them bloom. It doesn't make much of a difference to the plant. Uh, so it's up to you. It's entirely up to you. This plant has been in the Indian market for ages. I myself have grown up with a silver queen, which my mum owned. Back then, the, this plant was among the more common plants, but today it's gaining popularity and is more sought after, especially because a variety of cultivars are hitting the market today. And these cultivars are so vibrant and so beautiful in appearance. The ones that are brightly colored and have beautiful variegation and color on their leaves, especially like this Viduri, is uh, pretty expensive, especially in Mumbai. I paid 600 for this one and these ones, the green ones right here, you get it for cheaper, you get it for uh, around 100 to 150 or maybe sometimes 200 depending on the size of the plant. This again, uh, I have bought very long back these two, so I don't remember the prices, but I remember paying a little more for them than these regular green ones. The ones that have more red, more variegation are more expensive. There are two things that I absolutely adore about Aglonemas and it is firstly their striking foliage. The leaves, the shape of the leaves and the beautiful color on the leaf is what takes my breath away. And another thing that I really, really like about this one is the color of the stems. If you look at the stems, the color of the stem is so pretty and it adds to the beauty of the plant according to me. These plants are also popular because they are hardy, very easy to keep and not fussy about various conditions. They are excellent plants for beginner gardeners. I have done a video sometime back on top 5 hardy plants according to me. If you haven't watched that video, you can go and have a look. I have featured the Aglonema in that video. While dealing with a variety of Aglonemas, you have to keep in mind that every cultivar is different. The hardiness level of each one is also different. For example, uh, these green ones are much more hardier than the delicate pink ones, these lipstick aglonemas. It's much more hardy than this. And somehow, this viduri that is having so much variegation and color is super hardy and has been doing very well in my house under many different conditions. Now let's quickly dive into the care of this plant. The first thing we will be talking about is sunlight. You may have heard many people say that Agalonemas don't need sunlight. But I would say it differently. These plants do need sunlight like all plants do. But they tolerate low light conditions better than most plants. I can say that because of the experience that I've had with them. I've kept them indoors for the longest time and my hall doesn't receive any light. Some of these aglonemas are permanently sitting in my balcony, especially because they are huge in size and they take up a lot of indoor space. I don't have a very big room, so I have to be mindful of the plants that I'm keeping indoors. So some of these guys are, this one especially at the back and that one there, they sit outside permanently. You need to be careful about one more thing is that don't keep your aglonemas in very harsh afternoon sun. Uh, because the leaves might scorch. I water these plants when the top two inches of the soil is dry. Now, this also varies 
if the plant is potted in a different kind of soil if it is a very free draining soil i water it more frequently and if it is a moisture retaining soil or water retaining soil with a lot of coco peat in it i water it a little less frequently i use normal tap water because this plant has never shown any kind of displeasure with the minerals that are found in water but uh, this is something that i do for all my plants i fill water in all the buckets and the watering cans and leave it in the bathroom overnight and i use that water the next day so that the chlorine in the water evaporates so i do that for all my plants so that's a good practice to start with your plants if you don't want the chlorine in water to affect your plants another thing that you need to keep in mind is don't let the plant dry out for too long because dry conditions for this plant will cause the leaves to yellow and dry up completely now it's time to talk about the soil that this plant likes to grow in and i would say that this plant is not fussy and doesn't complain about the mixes that it is planted in i say that because i have some aglonemas growing in full coco peat some growing in full clay soil and neither of them are complaining but when i eventually get to repot these plants which is not very often because these plants don't fill out pots very quickly so the mix that i use is equal parts sand clay coco peat and compost i sometimes add gravel fine gravel or uh, perlite to that mix okay now let's talk about fertilizing i've heard people say that you need to fertilize this plant once in 15 days but believe me i have never done it i in my observation i feel that this plant doesn't need a lot of fertilizing so even if you get to doing it about once a month or once in two months should be enough for this plant what i do is i use slow release fertilizers like cow dung or vermi compost uh, once in a month or maybe once in two months and uh, that is good enough for my plants i also sometimes use a water soluble fertilizer i mix that fertilizer in water and i water all my plants with it so that i do mainly for convenience you can use a 20 20 20 npk fertilizer which should do fine for these plants if you talk about toxicity yes this is a toxic plant maybe not very toxic but yes it does contain calcium oxalate crystals which can cause irritation to the skin or will cause irritation if ingested the sap or juice of the plant when uh, comes in when it comes in contact with your skin may cause irritation i haven't experienced anything like that whenever i've handled these plants but probably someone with sensitive skin might experience rashes so you just need to keep in mind that you got to keep your pets and babies away from this plant Agalonemas don't require too much grooming but yes dust settle on their leaves especially when indoors and there are a few ways i get off the dust uh, first thing i do is when i'm watering the plants i wash the leaves as i water them if the leaves get dusty before i have to water my plant i would take a damp cloth and wipe each and every leaf or if you want you can use a microfiber cloth like i do and wipe down each leaf and pick up all the dust that settles on these leaves now you will notice that your plant especially at the bottom some leaves will start getting yellow and will start drying out you simply need to pluck out those leaves i as soon as they get yellow i pull them out i do sometimes forget to but it doesn't matter if you don't but it looks pretty unsightly if there are yellow leaves hanging at the bottom so you can just prune them off either pull them off or cut them off with a pair of scissors and the plant will look as good as new another reason why i pull these leaves out is because the plant is done with those leaves and those leaves are never going to come back so it doesn't make sense the plant giving out energy to save those leaves and sustain those leaves so just pull them out so that the plant focuses on bringing out more new leaves Aglonemas are native to tropical regions and that says a lot about them they would definitely love humidity they are humidity loving plants and will do really well in good humid conditions they will thrive and look very healthy in such conditions but in my experience i've seen that they tolerate low humidity as well especially when you keep them in an ac room a room that uh, has the ac on for a long time uh, which is stripped of its humidity these plants do okay in such rooms as well 
so i would even recommend that these plants might might do okay on office tests in places where the ac is on for a long duration since they humidity loving plants they will do well in your kitchen and in your bathroom as well again being a tropical plant agalonemas prefer warm temperatures they don't do well in extreme cold conditions when the temperature is below 15 degrees celsius these plants might not do well so if it's very cold where you live keep them indoors keep them in a place where you can control the temperature and they'll be fine this plant is a slow growing plant and it may take years for it to grow really big but in the right conditions aglonemas can grow to be 4 feet tall as well some cultivars there are three ways that you can propagate the aglonema the first one is through cuttings now when stems become as leggy as this ideally you could cut it and you could uh, root it in water or in soil and you will have a new plant you can see that uh, i am also getting new growth here the second way to propagate is through root division you can simply uh, divide the roots and put what you have divided into a new pot and you will have another plant the female flowers are on the base of the spadix and the male flowers are on the top portion of the spadix and the fruit that it bears resembles a red berry that holds one seed now if you get these seeds you can germinate them and you can try to grow an aglonema from seed though the aglonema is such a hardy plant it does have its fair share of troubles so i will just list down a few things that i came across and uh, i may not be able to cover each and every issue but i'll try my best you need to be careful that you don't keep this plant in places where it will receive an air draft it will not appreciate that don't keep it near windows directly under the fan or right in front of the air conditioning unit because if this plant dries up too much the leaves will yellow and dry up a variety of pests are known to attack the aglonema pests like mites scales aphids and mealybugs often attack this plant i personally have had to deal with a lot of mealybug infestations and the best thing to do for that is pick out each and every mealybug by hand as many as you can then spray the plant with neem oil solution dilute that in water and uh, give it a good spray you can do it even twice a day till the infestation is completely gone Remember there are two types of mealybugs some that live in the soil and some that live on the plant so don't just look at the plant and forget about the soil also check the soil for bugs and the ones that live closer to the roots so you might have to even repot the plant if the infestation is really bad a few other pests that could destroy your leaves are slugs and snails i recently had a slug infestation in my balcony and i found so many slugs on my plants and i found gaping holes on my plants as well just now when i was setting up these plants here i also found a little snail who has been chomping on my aglonemas so be careful observe and remove these pests physically from your plants use neem oil as a preventive measure so that the plant is not affected by fungal infections this plant is prone to many fungal infections this plant is prone to pythium root rot which is caused because of overwatering sometimes and also fusarium stem rot which is caused because of dry soil and uh, uh, high temperatures myrothecium and calatotrichum are two other diseases that these plants get and they result in leaf spots the best thing to do is repot your plant remove the infected parts and uh, apply fungicide i would always say that use fungicide as a preventive measure rather than a cure you can also use neem oil solution as a natural fungicide in case of this uh, reduce the level of nitrogen that your plant is receiving so if you are using a fertilizer that is high on nitrogen stop using that right away now if your new leaves are yellow and distorted in shape that may happen due to a copper deficiency and in such cases use a fertilizer that has copper in it you may also experience small spots appearing on the leaves that may be also caused due to some bacterial infections all you have to do is prune those leaves out and avoid getting those leaves wet especially when you're watering there is another disease that affects this plant which is called the anthracnose again that is 
uh, where leaf spots are formed on the uh, plant and they have a sort of yellow rim to it and probably some black fruiting structures in the middle of it. So if you see such spots on the plant, avoid watering your plant from the top and getting your leaves wet. I personally haven't experienced any of these diseases yet but if you do, do let me know in the comments down below how you've tackled the problem. Uh, it will also help everyone else who reads your comments. I really do hope that this video has helped you in some way. If you like this video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and if you are new around here, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and be part of our community. Do follow us on Instagram and Facebook too and I will see you soon in another video. Till then stay green.